So now we've actually verified that Swamp Bay was looking for Blue Moor. But what we need to do now is we need to actually verify that this is Swamp Bay who we're talking to and not an imposter. And so that happens at this verify connection state. And so here, what we're doing is that we're verifying that the connection ID they have in their state matches what we expect them to have in their state. So can you, we, um, sorry, can you give like a very, I, I think I, I just um, like a five minute summary on the difference between uh, client state and client consensus state? Like in my head, I have that consensus state as a snapshot of the recent chain in time. Um, so with like the given block height, et cetera, but uh, how is that different from client? I like to think of it as client state provides all of the information you need to do proof verification. Consensus states are the actual blocks. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So if I have a like client algorithm, I need to feed this algorithm some parameters such as chain ID and bonding period, et cetera. And then I need to actually feed it some sort of context. So in this case, what block am I updating from and what block am I updating to? And those are consensus states. Okay. Thanks. Cool. So we're back to the connection. So what we're doing is we're creating an expected connection. And we're verifying that this was actually stored by Svampe. And we're verifying that, um, did I go too far down? Maybe not. Um, let's see here. Ah, here we are. That's why I was getting confused. Here's the expected connection. So we're creating this connection end that Svampe should have stored when the open in it happened. So we create this connection and you can see here, a key indicator is the state is on in it. We have the um, information provided by the relayer. So we have a counterparty client ID and we have the expected counterparty. And so this information is what Svampe has stored. So in this case, the counterparty client ID is actually the client ID stored on this chain. And the expected counterparty should also be, um, no, sorry, counterparty client ID is actually stored on the Svampe chain, but the expected counterparty is us, which is why you see that the client ID is used here. Because we're verifying the connection on Svampe, so we must be the counterparty. And then we just have the expected versions um, that we're verifying in the delay period. And then we are actually verifying that Svamp base stored this connection. And we're using that using our like client algorithm of Svamp Bay. So when we do verify connection state here, and we call client state verify connection state, we have a client state that is representing this thing that we think is Svampe. So if we look at our card, we have all this information about Svampe and whom we're looking for. And we know the connection ID, we know the connection state that we're expecting, right? We're in try, so we're expecting it to be in, in it. We're expecting ourselves to be this counterparty, including our client ID. And we're expecting uh, maybe some sort of versions or whatever. And so we're using this like client algorithm, our like client parameters, and a specific height right here, a specific consensus height. We're proving that against. So we have the like client algorithm for Svampe, and we have the information, the latest time um, that we took a snapshot of the block. We have that, and we do this proof. And if this is successful, that means someone has provided us a proof or this representation in our mind that we have of Svampe for a connection which says that Svampe is in in it and they're expecting us to be the counterparty. So that's pretty powerful. That basically means that we now have gotten that message 
that Svampe has said hello to us and that they've said their name and that they want to talk to us. And we've now done that verification. And before that, we verified that Svampe was also uh, talking to the rec correct person. They didn't just have our name, but they also had our ID card and they had the correct ID card and the, uh, it wasn't expired. So that's pretty strong. So now we have like this connection between us. Um, but, uh, and so when we have that connection, we can actually go ahead and update our state to try open. Because now we're basically saying, uh, we would like to open this connection. Like, I totally believe you're Svampe. You passed all of my rigorous checks. So I would like to try to open this, but I, I want a confirmation from you that you also think I'm the correct person. So I'm gonna wait, I'm not gonna go fully open. I'm just gonna go to try. And we're gonna see if we can finish this handshake with a couple more steps. Any questions about that before I touch on version negotiation in open try? Cool. So now we're switching mindsets and we're going to versions. So if I recap what happened in init, Svampe proposed a version. And so now it is up to Bluemore to make some sort of decision on that version. Are we just gonna reject it entirely? Are we gonna try to find some sort of compromise or are we just gonna go with the proposed version? And that's what this function here does, pick version. So we have, we go ahead and we get all our supported versions and we get the version that the counterparty proposed. And if we go into this function, what it does is, if you look at this later, I'd totally recommend reading the GoDoc, but what it is saying is that it's gonna iterate over the proposed version. It's gonna look if it's supported by looking at the identifier. So the important part is the identifier. If the identifier is supported, then it's gonna look into the feature set and see if it can support that feature set entirely or not at all. And if it doesn't find a match, it keeps going through that uh, list in a descending order based on preference. So the counterparty provides us this list of versions with their strongest preference first and their least preference last. And we look at every version and we say, can we support this version? If we can't, we check the next one and we keep going. And if we don't find anything, we return an er error and say that the version negotiation failed. But if we can find something, we can find a version that is supported. Then we check the feature set. And if the feature set is entirely supported, that's all great. It's possible that you might have a version which doesn't require supporting the entire feature set. Um, but as it stands right now, uh, I believe you need to support the entire feature set that is proposed. But it's possible to propose a feature set that is only ordered or only unordered. Cool, so that's the version negotiation that happens there. Um, any questions about that? Did that explanation make sense? Cool, I'm gonna take that as a good to go and move on. If you have more questions about that, I'd recommend reading the Go doc because I found it pretty helpful when I was getting a refresher on how it worked. Cool, so that's pretty much all of OpenTry. And now uh, we also have this function here. Again, since we generated a connection, we want to add it to the client. Um, which brings a good question of if it's a crossing hello, is it adding it twice? We should check into that. So OpenAC is going to be very similar. Um, the first part you, you see there is version negotiation, but I would just like to highlight the part that is similar. So here we do that same process of validate self client and validate or get self consensus state. So we go through that whole process again, and we do the same verification of the connection state, client state, and client consensus state. So that's all the same as OpenTry. The only part that's different is the version negotiation. And the primary thing about the version negotiation is that we're just checking that what was selected on the try step is something that we support. So 
Um, the first case here is just making sure that we're uh, actually in in it or try open, that we're actually uh, going from either open in it or going from open try, and that we're not in some weird state. The second one is checking if we were in the init state and we proposed a version, we just want to check that the version we proposed or that the version that was selected by the counterparty, sorry. We want to check that the version that was selected by the counterparty in open try is something we support. If it is, then we can go ahead and agree on this version. So in our example, uh, we proposed English. Bloomore said, yeah, I can do English. And now we're checking that Bloomore indeed said that uh, we're going to speak English. And because Bloomore did, this is all going to work out fine, and we're not going to have an error. This third consideration is in the crossing hellos case, where we called try open, and now we're going to ACK, because they also called try open. And so what we want to make sure is, in try open, we're expecting to select the version that will be used. And so we're making sure that this is equal to the version that we, what they're saying we should use is equal to the version that we said we should use. Otherwise, we cannot agree on this version. And that is basically all of OpenAC. Of course, we update the connection um, with our state in open. And we also set the version now because it was selected in OpenTry.